Dear students, welcome to my channel HSC English Version BD. Our today's topic is about solubility product KSP. In this part 1 tutorial, today we will learn the expression format of solubility product formula and the similarities and dissimilarities between solubility product and ionic product. This is one of the most important topics for board examination and even for admission test also. Therefore, we will learn this topic from A to Z. Okay? We express solubility product as KSP. KSP is called solubility product constant also. Here, S stands for solubility and P stands for product. Solubility S is defined as a property of a substance called solute to get dissolved in a solvent in order to form a solution. On the other hand, product P means the result of multiplication of the concentration of dissolved positive and negative ions of a salt in an equilibrium state. Therefore, for solubility product, we can say that the product of equilibrium concentrations of positive and negative ions of a dissolved salt is called solubility product, KSP. But the condition is that the coefficient which is called the mole number of the ions will be the power of the ions respectively. In short, we can say that KSP is the measure of solubility. Okay? The value of solubility S of a slightly soluble salt will be given in the question and the value of KSP can be asked or the value of KSP of a slightly soluble salt will be given and the value of solubility S can be asked. Note that KSP is applicable only for slightly soluble salts. We do not apply KSP for highly soluble salts. Now the question is why do we apply KSP formula only for slightly soluble salts? See there are two types of salts here sodium chloride and silver chloride. If we add this solid sodium chloride salt in this water, solid sodium chloride will dissolve into water completely and form sodium plus and chloride minus ion. As sodium chloride will dissolve into the water completely, we will not get any remaining undissolved solid sodium chloride salt here in this solution. It indicates that sodium chloride is a highly soluble salt. As we will not get the presence of dissociated ions and solid insoluble sodium chloride together here at a time in this solution. Therefore, we will not get any reversible reaction here between them. We know that an equilibrium cannot be established without occurring a reversible reaction in the solution. And without establishing an equilibrium, KSP will not work because KSP is an equilibrium constant. For this reason, KSP is not applicable for highly soluble salt like this sodium chloride salt. Note that any compound containing a group 1 element which are called alkali metals, an ammonium ion, acetate, nitrate or sulfate group and almost every compound with a group 17 element which are called halogens is highly soluble except fluorine. Practically everything else either has low solubility. On the other hand, if we add this silver chloride salt in this water, the salt will not dissolve completely. Only a little portion of this salt will dissolve and form silver plus and chloride minus ion. The biggest portion of this solid insoluble salt will remain unchanged and stay here as solid like this. It indicates that Silver chloride salt is a slightly soluble salt for the presence of solid insoluble salt and the dissociated ions together at a time here in this solution a reversible reaction will occur between them and thus an equilibrium will establish here. At this stage the ionic product is called solubility product. Therefore we can say that 
KSP is only applicable for slightly soluble salts. Okay? Now, we will learn the expression format of KSP formula. For any type of slightly soluble salt, KSP is equals to concentration of cation of the salt that dissolved in water times concentration of anion of the salt that dissolved in water. Condition is that the coefficient that is the mole number of cation will go here as cation's power and the coefficient that is the mole number of anion will go here as anion's power. According to this KSP formula format, can you tell me what will be the KSP formula for aluminium sulphate and calcium bromide respectively? See, for aluminium sulphate, at first we will have to dissociate this salt into ions to get this cation and this anion. Therefore, we will dissociate this salt into ions like this. There are two aluminium here. So, I wrote here these two. The valency of aluminium is these three and aluminium has the ability to leave three electrons from its outermost shell. So, I wrote here three plus. There are three sulphate here. So, I wrote here three. These two is the valency of sulphate. So, I wrote here two minus. Okay. From here, we can write KSP is equals to concentration of this cation that is concentration of aluminium 3 plus ion times concentration of this anion that is concentration of sulphate 2 minus ion. Condition wise, I wrote this mole number here as its power and this mole number here as its power. For calcium bromide, we will dissociate the salt into ions like this. There are one calcium here. So I wrote here one calcium. The valency of calcium is these two. That means calcium has the ability to leave two electrons from its outermost shell. So I wrote here two plus. There are two bromine here. So I wrote here two. Each bromine has the ability to take one electron only. So I wrote here one minus. From here we can write Ksp is equals to concentration of this cation times concentration of this anion as the mole number of this cation is 1 so I wrote here 1 as its power and as the mole number of this anion is 2 I wrote here 2 as its power this power 1 cannot change the value of this concentrated ion so it is not necessary to write 1 as its power ok in our previous tutorial we learnt about ionic product KIP. Interestingly, the formula of ionic product KIP looks exactly the same as the formula of solubility product KSP. We use the same formula for KIP and KSP, but the process of determining the value of KIP and the value of KSP is different. For determining the value of KIP, we just need the value of the concentrated cations and the value of the concentrated anions. On the other hand, for determining the value of KSP, we need the solubility value of the concentrated cations and the solubility value of the concentrated anions. Okay? Note that we can determine the value of KIP either from saturated or unsaturated solution. But to determine KSP value, Saturated solution is a must. Thanks for watching.